I've seen some really interesting products on the internet that almost look too incredible to be real. So I've ordered some of these viral products, so we can take a look. I want to find out do the products actually work and how are they made. First on our list is this amazing looking tumbler. I placed an order and this box arrived. It came in this really smart packaging. It is expensive at nearly £50, but let's take a look. It comes in this nice little pouch and, huh, what's this? A certificate of authenticity. It's all very nicely put together, so let's take a look at the product. Well, here it is. It's got this matte black finish to it. It does look smart. Down the side here, there's this strip. There's quite a chunky look to the top and this rubber non-slip base piece. So let's see what happens when I open it. Ha, <laughs> wow, that is amazing. Check it out, that's just so cool. And wow, it feels really cool. It's like the outside layer has been tightly pulled around a 3D geometric body. When you're holding it like this, you can kind of push and dent in the outer and feel the kind of diamond shaped structure underneath. Then when you open it, it stretches tight and just transforms it. It's like you're crushing the canister and it's crumpled absolutely perfectly. What a cool idea. And it makes a really satisfying sound. If you want to buy one of these, there's affiliate links in the description. But let's take a closer look. The instructions show nice illustrations of how to dismantle it. I unscrewed the top. There's some more paperwork and a silica pouch. And here it is. It's obviously got a seal there. This little handle lifts up. And here's the lid. You can see there's a little air hole to help it pour. And rubber seals. It folds over and closes nicely with a good action. But look what I noticed. It's actually on a cam. And when we open and close it back and forward, it lowers and raises this collar. So that's the action for how this thing works. So if I try pushing down on this part with my hands, check that out. That's so cool. But we can actually disassemble this thing further. The instructions say we can remove the upper rim seal here. Slide out this base sheath. Oh, look at that. It's the framework to which the pattern forms when we open the lid. And it's made of this really interesting piece. Next, apparently we can remove the lower rim seal. Yeah, there we are. Then slide off the outer shell. I think this part is super delicate, so I'm being very careful. It's this thin plastic film. And it's got a kind of slight rubber feel to the outside. And obviously you can bend and fold slightly without leaving creases, then return to its original form. And here's the tumbler base. Nothing else comes apart though. But if we slide this piece back over, you can see what the full structure's like underneath the film. Ha, <laughs> that really is a clever design. One thing I did notice though when I put it all back together, if you haven't screwed the lid down properly, when you activate it, the outer layer leaves these sort of bubbles because the lid hasn't pushed it down quite far enough yet. So if you see that, it's a good indicator to make sure the lid is screwed firmly all the way down. There we go, that's better. And the last thing left to test is, does it keep your drink hot? It's got a 16 ounce capacity, which is 475 milliliters. It's BPA free and it's double wall vacuum insulated. I'm just testing it with boiling water. And once it's full, I used my thermometer to take a temperature reading. It came in at 95 degrees centigrade, which is 203 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm closing it up and I'm going to leave it for a few hours to see if it keeps our water hot. We'll come back to it later, but next I want to show you this. It's made by the same company, but it's a pen. And I think I need to push this little switch. Ha! <laughs> oh wow, check it out. It's just so cool. That crumpled up metallic look. It looks just awesome. And you even get that sound when you do it. It comes shipped with a little coating on the tip to stop the ink drying out. And there it is. It's got to be one of the coolest pens I've ever seen. It's like a little fidget and I'm just going to sit at my desk flicking that switch back and forth. It's really cool if you do it slowly and watch that crumple zone moving up. They do a range of colours, which is nice. And they even do combo packs with the tumbler. There's a link in the description. They do feel well made. There's a handy little pen clip at the top. And the gel ink cartridge is replaceable. Next on our list is this expanding worm fidget toy. I found these were pretty cheap at about £7. So I ordered one and this is how it came. Open it up and, huh, well, check that out. It's this kind of big lattice of interlocking plastic strips. You can stretch it out and even compress it. Huh, <laughs> that does look weird. And as well as this larger size, you can also get a smaller one. It's the same thing, but it fits in your hand a bit easier. They do look cool, and I'm switching to a black background to make them show up better. It kind of catches the light as it moves around in your hand. You can squeeze and compress it, then pull it right out. It's like a really fun fidget. It feels kind of odd, but I just want to keep playing with it. And when it catches the light at the right angle, it really does glow. Pretty cool, huh? The larger one is quite a lot bigger. The plastic pieces are longer and slightly thicker, so it feels a bit stronger. And one thing I did notice with the smaller one is, if you're sliding it around in your hands, some Sometimes one of the pieces unclips. 
You can see now the whole thing is made up of these strips and it all just clips together. I was able to easily snap it back in and it never happened to me with the larger one. Maybe because the pieces are thicker it's a little bit stronger. But what's really cool is as well as stretching it out you can even bounce it on the table. It does move and morph in some really peculiar ways. Ha! <laughs> that looks amazing. And you can even push it down onto the table then release it to make it jump. And oddly I found the smaller one had a bit more spring to it. But now it's time to see how well the tumbler has kept our drink hot. I left it for 4 hours and with a quick temperature check we can see it's dropped down to 65 degrees C. That's 150 degrees Fahrenheit. That really is pretty good after 4 hours. Still nice and hot. But the next thing to look at on our list is this. Levitating moon lamp. There seems to be a few different types for sale online and I've read various reviews. Some good and some not so good. I bought this one. So let's check it out. It comes well packaged and this must be the moon. Take it out of the bag and oh, check this out. It's quite a hard plastic and apparently it's been 3D printed to replicate the same craters and features that exist on our moon. Pretty cool huh? The base here has got this plug on the bottom and there's a bit of weight here. You can see if I place it down and rock it, it's definitely bottom heavy. So next we've got this piece. This must be the base of the lamp. It's this nice wood effect. It feels solid and quite heavy. There's a non-slip pad on each corner. On the rear there's a power socket. There's this hidden power button on the front. And right in the middle here there's a centre mark. So it's powered by the mains and they supply us with this adapter. I placed the base down on the table, plugged in the lead and switched on the adapter. And apparently we just need to lower down the moon towards the base and it should start to float. But oh, that's not right. Let's try again. You can see the light flashing on and off as it gets closer to the base. But every time I bring the moon close, it just sticks to the base. It works with clever magnets and an induction loop. But I just couldn't get it to work. But then, after trying and trying, ha! Success! It's working! Check that out! That is so cool! You can see right underneath it and it starts to spin all by itself. Dim the lights and oh wow! That looks stunning! That's so beautiful! You really can see all the craters and contours. And what's really cool is we can turn it off, but it keeps floating. And there's actually three different colour settings. There's yellow, pure white and slightly bluish. And unlike some of the other makes I've read about, this one is completely silent. Now to prove how well it levitates, I'm going to try sliding a piece of paper underneath it. And yeah, look at that, we can move the paper all around and straight through. It's completely unaffected. I do love this lamp and I found with a bit of practice I can remove it and sit it back on a lot easier now. There's a bit of a knack to it. There's a link in the description if you want to buy one. But have you seen this before? This rotating globe really is amazing. It's actually solar powered and doesn't need a power supply. To see me review it and also find out about this amazing marble perpetual motion simulator, you can click on the link here. Have fun, stay safe and as always, thanks for watching.